In this video, I want to talk about how to know who you should work with. There seems to be a misunderstanding within counterfeit Christianity regarding who you're supposed to work with. Uh, who, are you, who are you supposed to be spending your time with? The word says have nothing to do with people who are engaging in outright wickedness, outright sinful behavior. If you have God in you, then you're going to be moved to stop sinning. You're going to obviously be in a position where you're working toward what is required of you in your covenant and you're being changed and you're regularly engaging in fasting and uh, God is taking the taste of sin off your tongue. And I mean, you're going to be changed. You're also going to be able to hear truth. You're going to be capable of being reproved because your desire is for truth. And because the spirit in you is a spirit of truth, God is going to begin to move you to follow his laws and keep his decrees. And you know what? There aren't a lot of those people. So you're going to have to get used to not being in a mega church. You're going to have to get used to not being in this huge congregation. But see, here's what I see people doing. What I see them doing is what they learned in counterfeit Christianity, which is to go out there and talk to everyone. Who's moving you to do that? Is God telling you to do that? Because God tells me which ones he wants me to work with. And part of the way he shows me who he wants me to work with is by discerning the fruit that's coming from that person. If what they say are lies and I reprove them and they continue on and try to justify themselves, which happens all the time on the channel, people come on and they drop off their false doctrine and I'll say, well, it says this in the Bible. What do you think of that? And if they don't respond, I know what I'm dealing with. Or if they respond in such a way that they're trying to justify themselves and defend themselves and speak on their own authority or the authority of the world or the authority of counterfeit Christianity, I know what I'm dealing with. However, if they're able to hear that reproval and they thank me, you know, I mean, I've had people do that on the channel many times. Thank you for correcting me. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to know what the truth is. You know what? I recognize that because when someone is, has reproved me, I do the same thing. When someone has said something to me, I go back to God and I want to know the truth before I respond to them. I don't just respond because, oh my goodness, I've been exposed and I need to defend myself. Who am I? Who cares? I'm not here to save my face. I'm here to save my soul. I can't tell you everyone that you're supposed to work with. That has to come from God. And I don't even know everyone I'm supposed to work with. There are people in my family who I'm deeply concerned about, who God has told me, you've already tried to reprove them. You are not to keep pounding them. I know what I'm doing with them. So what happens when we start stepping in and thinking we know better than God and, and we start doing that, we get sucked in and we get handed over to the spirit we've chosen because we're engaging in self-idolatry. You're going to get battered by the devil if you do that. I, I can tell you from personal experience. You need to follow the spirit of God. Only the spirit of God can work through you. Only the spirit of God can testify to what you're saying. You need to receive healing from him first and then he's going to activate you to walk in the authority he's given you within the responsibilities you already have. Don't start stepping outside of the responsibilities you already have, like the rest of counterfeit Christianity, in order to somehow justify yourself and think that you're something special. Listen, the work God's going to have you doing, you are not going to feel like something special because it's not for your glory. It's for God's glory. He's going to heal you first. He's going to have you walking in the responsibilities he has already given you. And when you have proven worthy of that trust, then he will uh, activate you to manage his church. If you're not managing your own responsibilities, the things he's already given you, you can't manage his church, period. Jesus discerned whether people were his, whether they had been chosen for him by the father by what was coming out of their mouth. Then he could understand what was coming from their heart, what was coming out of their mouth, what was coming out of their right hand, what was on their forehead. How is it that they think? What are the things they do? That's how he discerned it. And he set an example for us. So for example, in the book of John, when he is talking to the Israelites and they're arguing against everything he's saying and what's coming out of them is pride. We're not slaves. We're children of Abraham. We've never been slaves to anybody. You're a slave to sin if you sin. You just keep arguing and keep arguing. And what does Jesus say? He says, why can't you hear my message? So he asks them a question and then he answers it immediately. Because you are children of the devil and your desire is to do the same desires of your father. How do you know that? Because they were claiming to be of God. They were claiming to be children of Abraham. How did he know that they were children of the devil? Because God has predestined those as objects of his mercy 
and objects of his wrath. Do you think that objects of his mercy speak like that? Pride and arrogance. You think objects of his mercy are unable to hear the word of God? No, the spirit of God enables them. If the spirit of God is in them, the spirit of God will enable them to hear. On the other side of that, Jesus said to Peter, who do you say I am? And Peter said, you're the son of God. You're the Messiah. And Jesus said, blessed are you, Peter. That didn't come from you. That came from the father. Was Peter one of his? Did he know within that group of 12, which ones believed and which ones didn't? He even talked about 11 of you are clean, but one is not. He's a devil. And then the word says, because he knew that Judas didn't believe. Those who deny Christ are the Antichrist, or of the Antichrist, of Satan. Those who speak in opposition to his word, even claiming to be in him, but distort his word of the Antichrist. They are fighting against his name and his purpose, which is his purpose. Those who, as right now in history, those who are justifying themselves, doing all of the things that you find in Revelation 2 and 3, leading others to sexual immorality, to false prophets, false teachings, eating doctrines, food, sacrifice to idols, distorting the word of God and leading others to do the same. These are those who are of the synagogue of Satan. They are not of Christ. So who are you? Who am I to think I'm just going to go tell everybody? I'm just going to go talk to everybody rather than being led by the spirit of God. You remember when Christ sent out the apostles. He told them how to discern. He told them what to do. He told them to go to a house and leave the, and let their peace rest on that house if it's worthy. And if it's not worthy, let your peace return to you. Dust your feet in protest against them. It is going to be worse for them on the day of judgment than for Sodom and Gomorrah, Tyre, and Sidon. Did he say sit and just, you know, continue to have debates with them. Hang out with them. Maybe it'll rub off on them. That's what I see people doing. You're not supposed to blend in with the world. What's the matter with you guys? I know people who still hang out with the same people that they used to use drugs with and drink with. What's the matter with that picture? You just made yourself as one who blends in with the world, who hangs out with the world, who defiles yourself by corpses, hanging out with the dead. You're not supposed to be comfortable there. You're supposed to be grieved in your righteous soul by the things that they're doing and the things you used to do. Either they can hear the message or they can't. And you know, when you were a slug living like that in the world, when you were dead, when I was dead, you know darn well that you don't want to associate yourself in that way. When you start feeling low, it makes you, feel, it makes you justify yourself when you're around someone who, you know, maybe they're, they've got their act together. You're not doing them a service. You know what happens? They call you when they're low and then they feel like, you know what, I'm good. Good now, glad that passed because I have a Christian friend. They're good with me, so Christ must be good with me. How are you gonna be direct with them? How are you gonna be straightforward and tell them you're ruining your life and you are on a bad, bad track? And if you don't get off that road, you're not only gonna die physically, you're gonna forsake your entire life. How are you gonna say that to them? You are to live as one who has been set apart as a holy people as a holy nation. And if anyone else wants to join that, then let them join that. But you don't hang out with the world to wait for them to get it by osmosis. You dust your feet in protest. If they can't hear the message, if they reject the message, if they distort the message, you dust your, you dust your feet. Was Jesus hanging out with the tax collectors? Is that what he was doing? No, they were able to listen and hear the message he had. He knew that they could listen and hear the message he had. He was not hanging out with them, drinking a beer and watching the game. He wasn't hanging out. He had a baptism to undergo and he was under great constraint until it was completed, until it was fulfilled. He wasn't wasting any time and he wasn't taking that time for himself. He was keeping it moving, always looking to the next thing he was supposed to do, to the next town he was supposed to go to, to the next message he needed to establish. You need to do likewise. You need to discern who are his and who are not. And that's not a matter of judgment. That is a matter of discernment. You have been called to test the spirit. You have been called to discern the fruit that is coming from a person. If they are not being changed, you need to dust your feet. You need to reprove. You need to call them on it. And then you need to dust your feet if they do not change, if they are unrepentant. Because if they don't change, they are inherently unrepentant. Repentance includes change. Not sometimes has change, all the time has change. You heal as an individual, then God will move you to walk in the authority he's given you, in the relationships that he has given you. When you have done well with staying with his spirit, staying in step with him, not doing what you think you're supposed to do, doing what you're receiving from God, 
then he will begin to teach you how to walk in the position, in the role for which he has set you apart. I want to tell you something else that's going to happen here. When you start discerning who you're supposed to be around and who you're not, you're going to find that you stop getting chewed up and spit out by the devil. Because if you don't make these distinctions, you will find yourself in long conversations with people who are just trying to exhaust and confuse you. You will find yourself in situations where people are abusive. But I want you to know something. If you have the right heart and if you listen to what I say God, about this, what I'm saying in this video, God is going to move you. He's going to move you and he's going to teach you what to do and what not to do. So even in those situations where you end up exhausted and you go to him and you say, Lord, I just feel so exhausted. He's going to teach you why. There are people who contact me all the time and they want to have debates and they want to, you know, they want to say, but well, but what about this? And they want to justify themselves at my expense and I, and, and they want to postulate and do all of these things. And you know, the way that I speak, you guys, you know how I speak. I will flat out tell them. If you want to have a postulation conversation, you need to go out there and get a therapist because I do not have those conversations. We're going to speak on the authority of the word or we're not going to speak at all. And either God will enable them to do that or he won't or they're not one of his. Another thing that I've seen when I've done that with people is that, you know, there are some people who are able to kind of keep it together and they can have that conversation with you. And then there's something that will shift like suddenly and they'll start to go back into that pattern. And they'll be like, they'll say things like, well, what if I don't want to change or like weird stuff? And it, you're, what you're actually seeing is the spirit man, is a spirit manifesting in them. Totally good. Able to hold the conversation and then something just, sh it just snaps. And you know what? I, I realize this might be a little bit, this is more like advanced stuff that God will teach you. But if you're in a position of helping someone to heal in those situations, you need to tell the person, you need to be honest about what you just saw. If you're listening to this, to this video, you're probably not there yet. So just follow what God has you doing. But I guess I say that so that I can give you an example of when God gives you the eyes to see what's actually going on, he brings you into that anointing, you're going to speak in a very different way. Your conversations are going to be so different. For me, I don't sit around and have idle chatter with people. And I know that that's like a thing in the world. Like people just sit around and they're like, how are you? How are you? I'm here for a purpose. And I'm living in that purpose all the time. Even when I'm sitting with my children, I'm always engaging in fruitful dialogue with them. I'm always mindful of the example that I need to set with them, the way that I need to speak, the way that I need to live. But I don't do any of that idle garbage that's done in counterfeit Christianity. I don't have time for it. As you know, just like Jesus said, I, am, I have a baptism to undergo. I have things that I need to do in this life, a cup that I need to drink from, and I'm under great constraint. And many of you say things like, wow, you really put out a lot of videos in a day. Yeah, I do, because this is what I'm here for. I am very aware of what my purpose is in him, and I'm under great constraint until I fulfill it. You need to come to that kind of experience, that kind of understanding about what you're actually doing here. You're not here for yourself. You're not here for those lame conversations. It usually lead to like gossipy stuff anyway. Gossipy or worldly stuff. Who cares? Who cares? When I sit down with my friends, when I get together, like with my friend Nancy, for example, we're talking about our kids. We're talking about the testimony that God is building. He's doing at this time. I don't have fruitless conversation because I could be using that time to talk with God. I hope that helps. And I also hope that it gives you permission to be who you're supposed to be here. Because I think we've learned a lot of really wacky things in counterfeit Christianity, like we're just supposed to hang out with people until they get it together. No, we're compromising ourselves. You have a role to fill. Don't waste your time with the world.